Hi listeners, you are welcome to the continuation of our physics tutorial class from your favorite student score booster, your online tutorial provider on JAMP, WAEC, NECO and NAPTIB exam. Today's class will be focusing on a centripetal motion, which is still a continuation of motion concepts. I am Bangwade Ehe. Before we proceed, we need to consider the learning outcomes, which goes thus. At the end of this presentation, listeners should be able to define centripetal motion. Then they are also expected to define centripetal acceleration. Also, they are expected to be able to define centripetal force. And lastly, they should be able to solve relevant UTME questions relating to centripetal motion. Now, before we move properly into centripetal motion, I would like to urge our listeners to please refer to our video 1 which is on linear motion and our video 2 which is on Newton's first law of motion. As this will serve as foundation for this centripetal motion. The basic concept of motion such as acceleration, velocity, displacement, distance have been discussed in our video 1 which is on linear motion. I please urge you to refer to the video as it will assist in better understanding of this particular concept. Now on centripetal motion. Centripetal motion has to do with the movement of an object at the constant speed round a circular path. So considering a body moving considering a body moving with a constant velocity which changes direction continuously at Im as it moves around the circular path then its angular velocity omega will be given as angular displacement over time also its tangential velocity phi will be given as r omega where r is radius and omega is a uh, angular velocity in rad per seconds then the centripetal or radial acceleration a will be given as phi square over r or r omega square where a is the uh, centripetal acceleration phi is the uh, tangential velocity where r is the radius in meter or you use r omega square omega here is angular velocity where r is the radius similarly we can also use acceleration a equals the t uh, centripetal acceleration a will be equal to alpha r alpha in this case is angular acceleration y r is the radius having understood the basic formulas relating to the as angular acceleration and angular velocity then we can move to the centripetal force centripetal force is the force that keep a body moving at constant velocity around a circular path then from newton's second law of motion we are able to derive that force f is equal to mass times acceleration that is f equals m a now but in this centripetal motion we prove that uh, centripetal acceleration is equal to phi square over r or r omega square so if we substitute for 
a if we substitute for a as phi square over r then our centipeter force cf will give us m times a which is now phi square over r and that will give us m phi square over r or m r omega square that is when we substitute r omega square in place of a the unit of centipetal force is newton being a force and of course that is represented by capital n newton now having understood the concept of centripetal force we also need to consider the period of rotation t the period t of rotation is the time taken for the body to complete one revolution round a circle its unit is seconds then since omega is equal to 2 pi over t then when we make t the subject period t will be 2 pi over omega alternatively we can calculate t from frequency using t equals 1 over f where f is frequency in x or per seconds having understood the concept of period of the rotation the next term to consider is the frequency of rotation usually represented by small f the frequency f of a rotation is the number of revolution per unit time its unit is x or per seconds also from the formula that says omega that is angular velocity equals 2 pi f if we make f the subject of formula by dividing both sides by 2 pi then we have f equals omega over 2 pi alternatively we can calculate our frequency f from the period using f equals 1 over t and lastly we can also get our f by dividing number of oscillation by the time it takes so we have three main formulas for getting our frequency the first is f equals omega over 2 pi the second is f equals 1 over period so if you are given period 1 over period will be the frequency and the last one is f equals number of oscillation over time next is to consider the UTM sample questions and the first question we shall be considering comes from 2002 number 12 and the question goes thus a particle in a circular motion performs 30 oscillations in 6 seconds the angular velocity is dash so you are given the option a as 10 pi rad per second option b is 5 pi rad per second option c is 6 pi rad per second while option d is 5 pi rad per second solution so the first is to write out the given parameters and from the question you are given the number of oscillation which is 30 and time is uh, 6 seconds from this we can calculate our frequency f using f equals n that is number of oscillation divided by time so that will give us n which is 30 divided by 6 so 30 divided by 6 will give us 5x that means our frequency is now 5x and they ask us to calculate angular velocity so we can calculate our angular velocity using angular velocity omega equals 2 pi f so when we substitute for f that will be 2 pi times f which is now 5 and that will eventually give us omega equals 10 pi rad per second making option a the correct answer for this question now the next question we shall be considering comes from 2008 number 6 
and the question goes thus if a wheel 1.2 meter in diameter rotates at one revolution per second calculate the velocity of the wheel you are given option a to be 3.6 meter per second option b to be 3.8 meter per second option c is 4.0 meter per second while option d is 7.5 meter per second now solution the first is to write out the given parameters and because in the question it says if a wheel 1.2 meter in diameter rotates at one revolution per second so one revolution per second here means frequency since frequency is equal to number of revolution per unit time that is number of revolution over time so that means our frequency is one next then we are given the diameter to be 1.2 meter from there we can calculate our radius using radius r equals diameter divided by 2 that is d over 2 and that will give us 1.2 over 2 which is 0 0.6 meter so with uh, the two parameters now we have a which is one x and the radius which is 0 0.6 meter then they ask us to calculate the velocity and our velocity equals omega r but omega is equal to 2 pi f so when we substitute for omega in phi equals omega r then it will lead us to phi equals omega which is now 2 pi f times r so eventually we have phi equals 2 pi f r so when we substitute for f and r that will be phi equals 2 times pi which is 3.142 times f which is 1x times 0 0.6 meter and when you multiply that it will give you 3.768 meter per second and that can be approximated to be 3.8 meter per second making option b the correct answer for this particular question the next question we shall be considering comes from 2011 number six and the question goes thus an object of mass 2 kg moves with a velocity of 10 meter per second round a circle of radius 4 calculate the centripetal force on the object so you have option a to be 50 newton option b to be 40 newton option c is 25 newton while option d is 100 newton so the first thing is write out the given parameters and from the question we are given mass to be 2 kg then we are given velocity to be 10 meter per second and also we are given the radius to be 4 meter so the formula connecting m phi and r hmm, will now be in terms of uh, centripetal force will be cf equals m phi square over r cf equals m phi square over r as discussed earlier then when we substitute our cf will equal to m which is 2 kg times phi square phi square can be written as phi times phi so leading us to 2 kg times 10 meter per second times 10 meter per second over r which is 4 meter so 2 times 10 times 10 will give us 200 divided by 4 now will give us 50 newton making option a to be the correct answer for this particular question now on to practice questions so we have about two questions here the first one comes from 2008 number five and the question goes thus a force f is required to keep a 5 kilogram mass moving around a cycle of radius of 3.5 meter at a speed of 7 meter per second so what is the speed if the force is tripled what is the speed if the force is tripled 
So you have option A to be 4 meter per seconds, option B to be 6.6 .6 meter per seconds, option C to be 12.1 meter per seconds, while option D is 21.0 meter per seconds. So the correct answer will be 12.12 meter per seconds. And that can be approximated to be 12.1, making option C the correct answer. So the next practice question was taken from 1999 number 8 UTME. Uh, and the question goes thus. A, particles, a particle of mass 10 raised to power minus 2 kilogram is fixed to the tip of a fan blade which rotates with an angular velocity of 100 rad per second. If the radius of the blade is 0.2 meter, the centripetal force is dash. So you have the option A to be 218, option B to be 20, option C to be 200, while option D is uh, 400 newton. So the expected answer will be 20 newton, which is uh, option B. Now, our next video will be on projectile with sample questions and solution from the UTME. And we promise that is going to be an interesting one. Pl I urge you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and share our videos, as we promise to be bringing you more interesting lecture on physics and some other subjects relating to UTME. Thanks.